All right, so it's three o'clock and we're here and we're live. And uh, I've got yet another image of Ned the Barbarian uh, fighting some kind of critter, in this case, a bad monkey. <clears throat> so I'm gonna jump right in and start modifying this, uh, this picture. There's several things I don't like about it. Um, again, with the staticness, I, I drew this nice loincloth hanging down in what was probably a very realistic fashion. I start, um, but it's just straight down, which means it, it looks like he's just standing still. And the braid looks like he's just standing still. And it's it can be very hard when uh, when you're drawing people and they've got both feet on the ground and everything. And they're maybe in a good uh, sort of an action stance, you know, like they're getting ready to do something, even if they're not actually doing it. Um, you know, it seems like it would be a great action thing. And then you draw it and somehow it's just not very active. It doesn't doesn't have that amazing movement and dynamics and, and um, we demonstrated yesterday that you can work around that very thing uh, by making the background have diagonal lines and, and violence um, it, it just gives you this explosive feeling like like somebody's busting through and, and coming at you you know and uh, so that can be a very effective tool and we may be doing some of that here. Um, but two other things that we did yesterday and we're going to repeat um, is uh, to make his hair and what little bit of cloth he's wearing uh, not sit still. It's, it's gotta be, hi Sharon, uh, the, the cloth has to be in motion here. So um, I'm gonna move that around just to, Just to move that around so uh, make it dynamic there was an art teacher uh, he, he's been dead for quite some time uh, but his name was Bern Hogarth and he um, presumably was a very good artist on a number of topics uh, one of the things He's possibly, okay, second best known for, he's, he did the uh, the uh, newspaper comic strip of Tarzan for years. Um, there was a, a Tarzan comic. He did that, um, but he also wrote these books called dynamic anatomy and dynamic hands and feet and dynamic kittens and everything everything he wrote a book about was dynamic um and he was very much into being dynamic um my art teacher uh jd parish was a student of Bern hogarth's and he talks about him every now and then tells these stories because Byrne was apparently very loud and he's and he said dynamic uh, a lot and so uh, uh so it was very like him to to do stuff like that and he would probably talk about just this kind of thing um you know you drew a picture and it looks really good but it's not dynamic and so we're gonna fix it we're gonna make it we're gonna make it dynamic for burn uh i never met burn Hogarth, and I never met Frank Frazetta before he died, or, or after, um, but uh, I met J.D. Parrish, who was a student of Bern Hogarth, and Frank Frazetta used to take life drawing classes from Bern Hogarth, so I'm two degrees of separation for all that that's worth, which is pretty much nothing at all. But there you go. Um, so already it's a bit more dynamic. It mostly just looks like maybe there's a breeze. 
Um, but uh, but there's a bit more dynamism. This guy actually had more movement to him before I drew the, the monkey. Um, it probably made a somewhat poor choice. I mean, I, I, it looks right. I mean, you know, if he was facing an antagonist, that's about where he ought to be. But the way these two figures overlap kind of confuses both of them, The especially in just a black and white uh, pencil drawing, charcoal drawing. Um, it starts to become unclear what's happening in here. And that will never do. So we're going to find a way to fix that. And there are two things, and I will I will talk about them before I proceed. Burn Hogarth's dynamic light and shade. See how I brought that back around? Um, so this is a really cool book, and he illustrates how much action and and movement you can get into a white background with black shapes, black, black silhouettes, if you are strategic about how they're placed. Because, you know, this is Tarzan, is very obviously Tarzan. Um, but you notice all around his figure um, is mostly white, you know, and if you had him closer to the branches or, or overlapping more shapes, he would just disappear. He would just become a blob uh, in the paper. And then you've got images such as this one, where you've got white background, black silhouette for all of the the bodies, and uh, a black silhouette of the grass on the ground, but then a white silhouette of the grass on the ground in the foreground. So you've really got three planes, you know, back, middle, front. Um, so uh, that's a very, very effective, and it's pretty effective here too where the the bull has fallen on the ground and and you can see the weeds in front of his neck there and um so that's uh dynamic and it's uh it's a a lesson that illustrators learned back in that time and it's a weakness that you see sometimes in in other illustrations that uh, Sometimes you look at a picture and you go, wow, that's really well done. Why am I bored? Right? You know, it's just like that should be very exciting. And I'm just kind of like, meh. And um, so you knew, I think, that I was going to show you a Frank Frazetta painting before before we went on. Um, this is part of a book that I found in a used bookstore for uh, like $3 or $2 because it was all the spine was completely crumbled apart and it was just falling apart. So um, I've got a couple good copies of this book. So I just let this one fall apart and didn't uh, didn't fight with it. So um, anyway, notice how it's almost like a set of stairs in this painting. I just can't coordinate my pencil with my with my image. But you got light and then dark. And then the top of the snake's head is light. And then under his top jaw is dark. And then the inside of his mouth is light. And then down here, the top of the snake is dark. But the underbelly of the snake is light. And then Conan's head is dark. And then his shoulders are very light. And then his lower back and his butt are dark. And then as you're moving away, because this is the center of focus, actually the whole area from his upper body to the snake's head is the same is the center of focus. So it gets dark, and then, okay, it's a little lighter here in the snake, and then it gets dark again, and, and then, you know, you get a light-colored floor. So it's it's back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And, um, and you've separated those shapes. So uh, Kurt is here, and he says, Tarzan, Tarzan has so many great artists, Hal Foster, Bruno Hogarth, Russ Manning, Joe Kerbert, and Mike Grill. Um, I wish I could draw half as well as any of them. I am sure that you can draw half as well, Kurt. Um, uh, I, 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 I was joking. I'm, I'm, um, 
all my friends are artists. So, um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Cause he's, uh, Tarzan's been around for about a hundred years <laughs> and, uh, there's been opportunity for a lot of great people to, um, to draw and paint him. Um, Jay Allen St. John, you didn't mention Roy Crinkle and Frank Rosetta, uh, are going to be my three, my three big ones. Um, here's where I screwed up on what I was talking about with the light and dark. Um, in my photo, the light was shining mostly, mostly straight at him. You can see the shadow pretty much going away from him. Um, and then, but of course it was from above. And so this whole hand and, and forearm was dark, which was fine when it was just nothing but blank white paper behind him. But now that I've put something dark right here, I've got dark on dark. So I've got to make a decision. One of two things. I can either make this gorilla's belly very light um, so that his this dark hand is silhouetted against that white shape, or go the other way and say, no, he's a dark-colored gorilla, and kind of artificially make the top of his hand, of, of Ned's hand, lighter. Um, I'm more inclined to the latter, although, to keep this guy interesting, I am attempting the light dark light dark light dark you know i am attempting to keep that that pattern so i do have a you know a gorilla's got a pretty big protruding belly you know i could make that fairly light but i've got to do more of one or the other to separate those two shapes because right now it does not look right and so okay i can if i'm doing that then i'm darkening this hand maybe even more than it needs to be or would otherwise need to be and I might want to go ahead and put another another finger, you know, just to uh, just to kind of further underscore that this is a a human hand over there. That, that you know, instead of this is a funny shape, uh, you know, that you're not quite clear what it is. Um, I mean, context should tell us what this is, but. It's just amazing how much you can just lose, uh, lose a shape, lose a, lose your drawing, really, um, and and it just kind of like gets away from you, and you're like, oh, this doesn't look like a hand anymore. This doesn't look like an arm anymore. I don't know what's going on. Now it suddenly looks like a, like a dead squid on the end of an arm or something. So you got to be fairly explicit with your shapes. So I can mess with that all day, or I can just move on. I'm just going to move on. We'll go with that. It may not be the better of the two choices. I'm still not convinced one way or the other. 
And by the time I take this to a painting stage, if I do, I might just change my mind and make the ape just, you know, jet black and uh, and make the hand lighter. John's here and Sissy, hi. So thank you, thank you guys for coming. And so there's that. And I'm okay with mid butt cheeks here. If anybody's going to freak out about that, let them. I think this calf needs to be bigger. So everything's over here, empty space over here. But if I want that triangular composition, I either need to, you know, make a hill like that. Oh, you can't even see that. Um, you know, just exaggerate the, the triangle there. That could be anything. That could be a building or a hill or, um, and, uh, Martin says, Hey, I would bet on the ape. Um, yeah, I, I tend to go that way. It's just like, um, every now and then you'll see like a, a medieval painting of St. George fighting the dragon and St. George's covered in armor and he's got a lance and he's up on a horse and the dragon looks about the size of my cat. And, and, uh, and he's skewering the thing. It's like, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, he done for that dragon. But, you know, I never, there was never really a sense of tension <laughs> to me in, uh, in that picture. It's just like the dragon. I, I, I get tired of, you know, Godzilla. But, uh, you know, I like, I like for the picture to, to, to say to me, I don't know how he's getting out of this, you know, right? I want I want the uh the hero to be in a in a circumstance that makes you go, "Oh crap." You know, because I think that's uh I think that's kind of compelling. Um it makes you want to hopefully you want to read that story. I don't illustrate books and I'm not really that eager to illustrate books, but I still think of myself as a book illustrator. I think of myself as um somebody who's uh who's telling a story and and uh you know so yeah i, I want to uh do something that makes you go oh i want to know the rest of that story and i do too so yeah um so that's a it's a mountain i'm just gonna go ahead and just draw a mountain and uh and then dangerous place Ned lives in. There's alligators down in the low country and gorillas up in the mountains. He has a rough life.
haven't done much more than vaguely establish that they are in some sort of an environment. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you don't need much more than that. Um, you just, uh, yeah, you want to have, you want to have something that says that, something that says, hey, there's, there's this guy and he's in this place and, you know, he's outdoors, he's out on the, you know, all by himself in the wilderness and then he finds this. Um, there may be a lot more to whatever the story is, um, but you don't have to draw every detail of everything. However, I still kind of want more. I want more. I want more and I don't know what more I want. And therefore, the thing to do is grab another sketch and do something else. I'll probably come back to that one later and there will be something more obvious to me. This is a really old one. It's from life drawing class. The guy was... Uh, I don't remember what he had his elbow leaning on. Uh, we had a number of uh, wooden boxes and stuff in there, and you know he's just stood and leaned on something. Uh, he was a he's a fairly physically fit young dude, and I don't know I don't really remember who it was. I think it's maybe the only time I ever drew him. And there were no photos, so I don't have that. One of the things that started this was a, a girl in the, in the, uh, Life drawing group. She asked me one day, do, "Do you ever finish your your uh, gesture drawings?" And I said, "What do you mean?" She said, "Well, I it's something you can do. You know, you get all these old gesture drawings, and there's, uh, you know, they're not very finished. They're only they were only five minutes or three minutes or whatever it was." Uh, but they're pretty nice poses, so you could go home and and look at your anatomy books or look at uh, uh, you know find photographs of people and and just try to put it together and try to uh, try to finish that drawing and uh, or just from your knowledge or whatever. So that's what I started doing, and I I thought that sounded like a good idea, and it's like kind of recycling you know you're taking these old drawings and going somewhere with it and doing doing something else getting another practice session out of that out of the same pose so I thought that sounded like a cool idea um, and I started doing that and then when I I just immediately segued into starting to draw costumes and, and you know if i got a finished drawing out of one of my old drawings i just started putting stuff on them and things like that so most of these were not gestures most of these were longer poses where i got more of this guy done But that's where the idea began, I think. I'm fairly convinced that this is too long. Uh, his leg 
is too long. Um, it's usually about one and a half head heights. That's almost a full two head heights tall. So I'm going to say, let's bring his kneecap all the way up here. Put his calf about there. So the kneecap, the calf. Again, after working on these gesture drawings and then and, and other drawings, just pretty much I decided none of them are sacred, you know, once they're once they're old life drawings, there's really not much you can do with them that's can't really sell it as it is. I mean I would sell it if somebody wanted to give me money for it, but it, nobody does. Um so um so it's a cool thing to to say. Well, let's let's try putting a costume. So you're almost treating this drawing like a like a paper doll, you know. And so somewhere back in there, I was rereading the John Carter of Mars books and reading the description of the. The clothes they wore, which were not very descriptive, they didn't really wear clothes at all. They wore leather straps, and uh, there wasn't a lot of description other than um, this one was very plain, or this one was gorgeously decorated, or this one was covered in metal studs, but kind of utilitarian. Uh, this one had the army medallions of this particular rank or whatever uh this one was encrusted in gems or you know something like this so um other than that it really doesn't it doesn't say you know exactly how these things are constructed or what exactly they look like uh, that's just left up to you so one of the things i started doing was just saying well okay well, if it's up to me, what what does it look like? You know, and I I started drawing this on a lot of my figures, and uh, the end result is I I still don't know what what I think this ought to look like. I, I redesign it all the time. Considering my baser interests, um, I can be surprisingly naive sometimes. And uh, when I was asking myself this question, it was just like, well, how would that strap go around his body? You know, would it, how would that curve and how would that attach in the back? And, and then I started thinking, is there anybody who wears this sort of thing? You know, is there any culture? Or, you know, that was kind of where I was coming from. It's like, is there some, is that based on something? Is there some kind of, uh, uh, you know, historical basis for this thing about wearing this leather harness? And so I Googled naked men wearing leather harness. I did that. I really did. And, um, and uh, just in case you're wondering, yeah, you will have some hits if you Google that. Go ahead, go do it. Um, but uh, if gay porn is going to freak you out, don't don't do it. Um, it actually, um, gay porn does nothing for me. But those particular outfits, always just like. 
that's super cool. Um, and I actually uh, downloaded a whole, I got a whole file of, of uh, gay boys in leather harness thingies that I use for references sometimes when I'm drawing this kind of thing. Um, so there you go. You call that a confession or a, or a genius. Call it whatever you want to. Put a buckle on both of these. There'd be some kind of buckle. A lot of the artwork has some variant of a buckle like that that's got the scratch crisscrossing. So I did that just to be, you know, canon uh, in a way. These are some of Gilead's generic decorative doodahs that I put on things. Kind of like here, generic decorative doodah. So I'm going to move his boots. I'm gonna give him So I did this years ago, this original drawing. Um, somebody's asking me a question. Do you ever do an Elric drawing? For me, your style somehow screams more cock. Oh, that's interesting. Um, no, I don't think no, I don't think I've ever drawn Elric um, intentionally. I uh, I kind of had a hang up. I'm I'm over it, but it's just a thing. Um, I used to think. I've got no right to draw a picture of Conan or Elric or John Carter until somebody hires me to do that. So I can only draw something that's sort of similar to that, but isn't that. I felt like I was stepping on a copyright um, to draw that actual character and call it that actual character. Um, I actually got hired one time to draw, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to say this name wrong, but people argue over Drist or Dr Drizit. Um, he's like Elric, only he's an elf. He's a he's a Dungeons and Dragons. There's the a Drow, the, the dark elf that lives underground. Basically, it was Ra Salvatore's way of of doing an Elric story. So he's got this dark, brooding, white haired. Hair, hero kind of guy, um, outcast and all that kind of stuff. So he's very El Elric like. And uh, I knew a guy that really loved those stories and wanted me to draw that. And I didn't want to draw that. I was like, mm, I can't really draw that. And then finally, I just decided he, he was like, Yeah, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll pay you. I don't know. He offered me money. And um, so that is, by the way, how to get me past my scruples is to offer me money. Um, so, so I said, okay, but it's not Drist. It's just a dark skinned, white haired elf with two sabers and a pet panther, but it's not Drist. Um, and he just looked at me and went, what? Uh, so it's just like, okay, I, I just had a hang up about that and, and felt like I had to, I had to say such things. So turns out 
not entirely unexpectedly that uh, once I was done, he didn't want to pay me for it. He wanted the painting, but he didn't think he should have to pay me because because uh, we were good friends. Even though prior to him hiring me to do this, we we had never met. Um, but now that I'd done the thing, we were good friends, so I shouldn't charge him. Um, so <clears throat> I took the painting to a sci-fi con and sold it there, and the title was not Drist. Uh, that was my <laughs> that was my title. Uh, I, I've got less of a hang up about it now. I don't. I just I see so much fan art and stuff and and it just doesn't seem to be a problem for anybody so whatever it was that put that in my head and said that's going to be a problem yeah i'm i'm over it uh still still in all in the meantime i kind of came up with my own characters and my own world and my own this and that and uh i also don't wants to take on commissions like that and uh you know because i just want to I, I just want to do this you know and and make paintings out of them you know, finish them up and make paintings and uh so i'm just kind of staying away from that sort of thing woman asked me just yesterday she was a great admirer of all this stuff that I've been posting and she said uh do you ever sell any of these and I said well I will you know yeah I'd, I'd sell any of them um you know it, it you know I made sure she understood it's newsprint it's you know it's 18 by 24 it's you know whatever but you know I'll I'll sell most of these for for 50 bucks or or something if you really want you know to have that plus shipping she said, okay, well, what I want is me and my husband and my three kids all dressed as barbarians. Oh, and my dog and my horse. And, and, and I want, and I was like, no, <laughs> like, no, it's just like, I just got through explaining. I would sell that, <laughs> that I'm not, I'm not volunteering to, um, to draw you and your kids, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm not upset. I'm, it's just, I don't know. That just doesn't seem. Just doesn't seem to, to be obvious. Uh, somehow when you say, um, I will sell existing pieces. People say, oh, okay. he just said he'll paint a picture for me. That's not what I said. Um, so I'm just this close to saying just. Flat out, no. When somebody says, is any of your work for sale? I'm just going to say, no, it's not. Um, and then later, when I've got a bunch of pieces ready for, to do a, an art show, you know, I'll just put them, I'll just do an art show, you know, do an event and, and things will be for sale. But just throughout the year, because every conversation I have like that, just about, um, goes that way. Somebody's like, okay. And then they start telling me what they want to hire me to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> not it's not what we're talking about <clears throat> so here's this guy and he's leaning on this robot uh, that was the last part that I did when I when I created this I I was like I drew Ned here in his uh, in his outfit and um, I was like, okay, what the hell is he going to be leaning on? I don't want you to have him leaning on a box. So I was thinking, you know, a rock, a tree stump, you know, some piece of furniture is like he could be standing in a bar. I don't know. All of that just kind of bored me. And, and then I just somehow I just hit on this idea of having him leaning on this robot dude. And I thought that sounded funny. So I did. And I posted it on my Facebook. The original version that we started with here and uh one of my friends sent me this tearful post 
about how this picture reminded him of his relationship with his cousin who has died and um, you know is like when in our childhood this was this was us this was like us in our childhood um, you know I don't know what he means I don't know how that is true but it was a it was a meaningful image for him it was like a really uh, uh, meaningful thing and that's great when that can happen there was no way in hell I could orchestrate that. You know, there's no way that I could say, you know, let's let's do a really meaningful picture of a guy with his elbow on a robot's head. I mean, it's just like that's impossible. Um, I mean, they couldn't have anticipated that it would hit somebody that way. It was probably just his mood that day that that made it hit him that way. But still, it was a it was a good thing for him, you know, reminding him of better times and thus and such. You can't make that happen, you know. Just do what you do. So, we basically did the equivalent of a drawing by splitting up a little bit of work on two different drawings, neither of which I consider done and, you know, ready to go, but certainly moved along and, uh, yeah. I, I had something there a little while ago, you know, I mean, at the beginning of the video, I had something that I considered not especially marketable, and now I'm getting it to a point where I think it might become uh, something marketable, and so, so I like that. I don't know if you can see, but down here in the corner, I did a little thumbnail, which is a repeat of this drawing, okay? And I did, well, you know, a landscape behind it and like a spaceship flying up in the air. I didn't, didn't get that far today, but there's, there's like a UFO kind of thing. I don't think I like it pointing in that direction. Maybe. Anyways, there was like a UFO kind of thing with like antennas on it. And, um, but then there's this shape back here. And I don't know, don't know what I meant by that shape. It could just be a hill, but it almost looks like a, it almost looks like a plane. Like a, like an airplane. With a cockpit right there and a, I drew it years ago and I don't know what I meant. Um, but I was trying to just work out. What needs to go where? One of the things I did is put some foliage down here to just kind of fill in the space. And that's definitely a good thing. Foliage is so useful. You know. And um Yeah. 
So like I say, well on the way, but not finished. And uh, it's been 45 minutes. So if you're still actually hung out this long, thank you. And if you didn't, well, you know, thanks. Thanks anyway. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Three o'clock today is only Tuesday, right? Um, just uh, in case it matters to anybody, I uh, won't be here Friday. So, because um, we got the doctor. All right. Bye bye.